The next step is to have the sterile components pulled up onto the field. So we'll open up the sterile components, which consist of the Viaguard suction strainers, and there's two. Importantly, this is the piece that we'll utilize for the case. This can be reserved for use later. We do not use that as part of the HT2000 setup. The next piece to get handed up to the sterile field is the table pack. The alternative method to hand over the table pack is to have the circulator just remove the blister pack and then use sterile technique to open up the blue. There are loose components inside the table pack, but they are double blue wrapped for transfer up to the sterile field. The table pack contains the inflow and outflow tubing that will be assembled. These components consist of two temperature sensors, two wire reinforced catheters that are used for the inflow, and on these the spacers are removed and discarded. Finally, there's the inflow Y tubing and the outflow Y tubing. Now we'll assemble these to place them into the patient. First step is to remove from the tubing all the red connectors. And those can be discarded. The inflow tubing will be assembled and it is noted by directional arrows that are red to indicate the warm inflow fluid going into the patient. The wire reinforced catheters are each placed on the ends of the Y connector. The assembled piece looks like this. The outflow Y tubing is denoted with the blue outwardly facing arrows for the cooler fluid flowing back from the patient. The legs of the outflow tubing are long to accommodate a very large patient. Many patients, these legs have to be shortened. To shorten them, simply cut them on the sterile field to the correct length with a pair of heavy bandage or, or regular scissors. Once they are at the right length, the outflow strainers can be firmly placed on the ends And now you have your assembled outflow tubing. Additionally, the two temperature sensors will be opened and placed per the clinician, either in the tubing or sometimes in the patient's sidewall, depending on clinician's preference. There is, on the temperature sensors, a 15 millimeter needle, so do be careful with this as it is sharp. Very commonly, the needle is placed, in this case on the inflow tubing, into the Y tubing itself. The temperature sensor is placed at an angle into the tubing in the direction of the flow. In this case, the inflow will be flowing with the red arrows that direction, and the temperature probe is angled in that same direction. The second temperature probe is placed Again, at an angle in the outflow tubing in the direction of the flow as marked by the arrows on the Y tubing. The Y tubing is now ready to be placed in the patient. 
As an alternative method for the temperature probes, some surgeons elect to place them in the side wall, abdominal wall of the patient. They place them superficially and they use some suture to keep them in place throughout the case. With the inflow and outflow tubing assembled, the surgeon will place them into the patient. Most commonly, the inflow tubing is placed deep into the pelvis and once in position, the temperature probe will be handed off the sterile field. The outflow tubing is placed superficially into the patient, up towards the diaphragm and on top of the liver bed. Be careful not to place the tubing so that it would become completely encased by bowel or omentum as this would restrict the flow. With that in place, the outflow temperature line can be handed off the sterile field. With the tubing position in the patient, the surgeon will either perform a temporary close in a closed technique, or the abdominal cavity will be lifted up in an open or coliseum technique. Once that's completed, the surgeon is now ready to have the sterile loop connected to the device, handed up to the sterile field, and the connections made to the patient.